time, our friends over at Cell Hound have outdone themselves. They're giving the Death Piles and Taxes listeners an opportunity of a lifetime. They're, they're going to help us make some money, get rid of that Death Pile, get your items listed because you can't sell out of an empty wagon. Man, so all you got, kill that Death Pile. When you go over to Cell Hound, use promo code, capital letters, Death Piles 25 to save 25% off of their service. And, and get out there and start making some money. Here comes the money. Here comes the money. Money, 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 well, I must mean that you know people that live in different places of the country. I do. Different friends in area codes. I'm just, yeah. Playing it, episode what? number 117 of the Death Piles and Taxes, and we're going to get uh, off of what we were doing before that you started and into something wholesome. Okay. Well, this is a wholesome wholesome podcast full of uh, new new uh, information about selling online. Yes. Lots or, of good information. There's something like that. Uh Sam said, my name is D-Roy Everett. You can find me on the socials of that. Apparently, I haven't been saying that enough. Dr. D-Roy. Adam is the tax man. If you got questions about taxes and you're a reseller, it would be a smart move to contact him. Can I tell you something that happened to me today? I feel like I've arrived. Let's hear why. Oh. Hold on. I, oh, I can't. Oh, I got I got one before you. Yeah, I was working, I was working on it. Derek did his big purple drink, and I'm throwing down the uh, Dr. Diet Dooski. Yeah, is that how you call it? Uh, sounds good to me. So, uh, what made what made you arrive today? So, in the accounting world, I'm a big guy on puns. Just my thing, okay? I like having something tricky, kind of that inside joke we've talked about it. I mean, the whole name of our podcast, Death Piles and Taxes, you know, you got to kind of know what it is. And when you know what it is, it's like, oh, that's that's what it is. Everybody's like, that's clever, right? I'm sure. You've gotten it's clever several times. Yeah, well, I get you. I, I, I know what that means. You're the guy that came up with it. Um, and, I, and I always like it when I put that, insert that in these, you know, big Facebook groups and you get all these people with the laughing emojis. You know, it just makes it feel good. Tickles you. Yeah, it tickles your fancy. <laughs> um, so what, one of the things is my accounting office. Like I said, my first name is Adam. The office is called Adam Up Accounting. Um, some people get it. Other people take a long time. I believe I've shared the story once. A couple was in here. The one husband says, I'm going to just tell you, man. We've, you know, we've been friends with him for like 10 years. Um, I don't know what you did, but the, the name of your company is just stupid. And his wife kind of looked at him like, what? Like, yeah, I, see, I, I don't get it. What, what is Adam Up Accounting? That just doesn't sound very good. And the wife, like, looked at him just right where you're sitting and just basically said, you're an idiot. And, and she said, well, what do you mean? And, and she says, Adam Up Accounting. If you say it slow, add them up like you're adding numbers as an account. And he, it's like he, he, his brain was exploded. What, uh, what did he think? Did he think it was just your name up uh, accounting? Yes, yes, that's what he thought. Well, that would be dumb. Yeah, it would be. But add them up. It's, it's if it was like, yeah, if it was like John Up Accounting. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's not. So that's the name of the accounting firm. So I always, you know, you can tell when people get it or don't get it, especially in, in the accounting world. It's kind of that, you know, that thing. Like here's this colostrum, mine is, you know, inside accounting. We all got to know something. Yeah. So uh, this um, software company that you use, and all of our clients are very familiar with, it's called Canopy. Um, it's an online portal. It's where we go. You get uh, basically a login. There's an app. You upload all your documents. It houses your tax returns. That's how we send you information. Um, they're actually located here in Utah. And somehow this lady that works there, um, I just had to call for some, some advice today, some, uh, something I need changed on the software for me so I could uh, sort my tasks a little bit better. And she says, oh, I know you. And I'm like, Lisa, what, what do you mean? She's like, oh, I, I know who you are. I love the name of your company. I'm like, uh, what do you mean? She says, my son's friend, uh, and you can, you, I know you don't have to confirm it, but Shane goes to you because he said that you use Canopy and that's where I work at. So he said, yes, I can confirm that. He is a client of ours. 
and you are correct. We we do his taxes. So she already knew who my company was just by the name of, of what we And then, uh, then you signed her up and 10 of her friends, and now you're retired and go to the Cayman Islands. Which is actually also funny because I have a new client who actually just barely emailed me who works at Canopy, and I had to send him a login to also do his taxes. So it was really, really good day. I, oh, feel you know, I, I was making making friends in all the right places. Uh, if you're uh, selling online, and right now it's getting to be tax season. There's a lot of tax questions out there. Uh, we, we try to put a little information in each show. Uh, if you go back through the archives, we'll probably answer any question you have. But if for whatever reason we don't, Adam is an easy man to find, and he's happy to uh, help you out. And if you read his reviews, he will charge you a fee. <laughs> We've been hitting it hard on the Instagram. I, I, you know, it's one of those things I've never really done much with. I know you're big on the social medias. We do it on the Instagram. Got some good feedback, but I've got a very tax-heavy question. Actually, it's a money question, and everybody's money question. Um, what would you say? Because part of the new taxes is I have to find out. I have to enter in how much stimulus money you got from. The first time, which was you know April May for most people, and then I also have to enter that exact amount on what it was for January, but it really happened in December because it was a part of last year, so it's reported. Depending on how much money you made, you made more or less. If you had a new kid, you might get a little bit more from that. Okay, and this is excluding the stimulus number three that might be coming here shortly. So the question to you, Derek is what is the plural of stimulus? Stimuli. Oh my goodness, you are just way too smart. Yeah. You didn't think I'd know that? No, I'm just saying. Okay, I'm going to throw you for another left hand turn here, okay? When you walk into a building, okay, it usually has like glass doors. It has like, you open one glass door and you kind of shut it and it has a little area and then you walk into the second glass door. What is that area in between the two glass doors called? Is it the atrium? No. Yes. No? Okay. I feel, I feel bad. All right. Yeah. Best, vestibule? Vestibule? I, I can't even pronounce it now. Okay. I don't know how to spell it, but... I, I <laughs> you don't know how to pronounce or, or, or spell it, but you know what it is. Vestibule, I believe. So, the vestibule. Vestibule. Well, you just say it real fast and confident. I was stuck in the vestibule for a little bit <laughs> this afternoon. I'm sure JCP will he'll, he'll correct yeah, us on it. Have to close one door to open the other, my vestibule. <laughs> That's... <laughs> That's exactly it. So, I, I don't know why you would have, but I said, I felt good today. I, I learned some new vocabulary. Somebody knew who I was at a company that I'm familiar with, and, and now I'm just happy to be here. Hey, I'm not going to bring you down then, Bruce. No, you're not. I'm a, I'm a salesman. Oh, man, salesman, good. I, I, I've got money in my PayPal account. Like, I, Oh, are you still on the PayPal? I am still on the PayPal. Ooh. So, uh, I know it's a hot topic. It's a hot topic. It, I'll, I'll just bring this up. So, I think a couple weeks ago... I don't know if I talk about it on the podcast. I'm not going to get deep into it because I think the person I'm going to talk about may listen to the show or very well might. What do you mean may? We have lots of listeners. Well, I've done a lot of business with them in the past. And so uh, Sunday, I'm sitting around and uh, minding my own business, watching some NFL football with great, the family. Great weekend. It was a good weekend. And if you're a football fan, it, it's coming up to be the Super Bowl time. It, I mean, that's that's. That's just a holiday. You want to is a great weekend. It's better than the Super Bowl because you have two games. I actually took off uh, from work. Everyone says, here's here's a heads up. Here's a life hack for you. Everyone says on Super Bowl night, man, I should have took off Monday. Yes. Oh, man, I can't believe I'm going into work Monday. Well, guess who's already took off oh, Super Bowl Monday? Smart man. Like everything, you are ahead of the curve. And uh, when they're like, oh, wow, you got anything going or whatever? Nah, I just got to take care of some things. They don't need to know. You need to take care of some Things. Well, because then uh, come come Super Bowl, because then everyone stays up too late. Some people might imbibe a little too much. Some people might eat a little too much. Some just stay up way too late, and then you have to wake up and try to go to work, and it's it's just miserable. You want to enjoy the night. Not this guy. Not this year. So um, anyway, so watching uh, football with, with the family and uh, some good games like we're talking about. It's going to be a great Super Bowl, I think. But... I, I get this letter, uh, or this message from eBay from uh, from a fellow that sells a lot of wrestling cards. He's bought a lot of wrestling cards from me uh, a few weeks ago. I think I talked about it. If not, he's a guy that always kind of lowballs me, and then I'd have to, like, bid him back up, and we'd come to agreement somewhere. It's Derek's dancing partner. They, they do the do we do the, we do the bat toot seat or whatever. The, the, the tango? The tango. I was going to say something that sounds a little dirtier than what it is. It's the just, horizontal mambo? No, I wasn't going to go that far. We don't do that. We just... Uh, yeah, we danced around a little bit. So 
uh, he sends me this this thing, and I'm like, okay, what card's he after? You know, kind of, because it's like, yeah, and like I don't know how old he is, but he's back in uh, back in the Carolinas somewhere. So I picture all this conversation in my head of how it goes as I read it. I have like a voice in my head of oh, what I hear and like stuff. Peanut butter falcon back because <laughs> uh, uh, anyways, he's been selling on eBay, but he's uh, looking. He was looking to liquidate his store, and he just sells wrestling cards that have been um, already been graded. So everything's graded. And uh, so I can see the product, and I can see what it's been graded at, and I see his asking price. And he's like, uh, basically, he always, Derek, Derek. He always calls me Derek. But it's just fine. That's my name. But it's just kind of weird when they address you that when your store's like, whatever. <laughs> and so he's like, I, uh, eBay's making me get into this man's payments. I don't want to do it. Uh, I'm not get, I'm comfortable giving my bank account information. <laughs> and I'm like, they got all this information on you. Anyways, PayPal's got the information. PayPal started off as eBay and PayPal were the same thing. Yes. But anyway, so he's like, uh, so just make me an offer. I'm trying to get rid of everything. And so I don't know how serious he is or whatever. And so I'm like, well, what do you want for everything? But at this point, he started, like, fire selling, and people are starting to snag up some things. And you were just foaming at the lips. Not and so I'm just like, not. don't even know what to do. And so I'm like, well, let's see how good he is. I'm like, well, what do you want? There's an Undertaker card um, that's pretty rare to find. And there was uh, a couple others. And so he was asking, like, $300 for this one card. Then there's a couple others that were, like, 80 90 range. So I'm like, well, what would you do for this, these two cards? He's like... You've always been good to me, Derek. Now, if uh, I, let's just let's just do sixty bucks right now. Sold. And that was my thing. I said sold, and then I start going through some things because I'm like, homeboy is getting out. I, I, you know, I did my due diligence. I'm not there to convince anyone to stay or sell on eBay, but I'm like, hey, I'm in managed payments. It's not that bad. I've actually enjoyed the experience, but I'm not going to sit here and try to talk you out of what you're doing either. Yeah. But I'm not, not going to feel guilty about it. So. So I, I start buying some stuff. And I'm like, oh man, he has some of those wrestling all star cards. So I, I take some screenshots and I send it over to our boy Painter because I'm like, hey man, get over here now. I can't buy everything. I'm not gonna buy everything, but I'm like looking to move some product. Told him the whole story. So he's over there negotiating. And I, I told uh, the guy who's selling to. I said, hey, I'm referring my friend. Give him some good deals. We'll, we'll clean you up. I want to be out by midnight. I, my my drop dead date for uh, managed payment is uh, midnight. And so. Needless to say, I got a lot of stuff for a low, low price. Uh, my friend Painter got some stuff for a low, low price. And this is all because we built this relationship, right? I've been doing business with him for probably three or four years now. Um, he would, I'd give him deals, but I wouldn't give him super low deals. But I was willing to negotiate. I didn't just say, uh, reject offer, don't want anything to do with you. I played the game, right? You did the BTR. You built that relationship with him. Well, because uh, built relationships with trust. Because... No, a lot of times people get their uh, they get their offers and they get their panties in a, in a bunch and they're like, oh, this guy offered me fifty dollars, I want seventy five. Yeah. You you can die a horrible death in a train wreck. I'm not going to deal with these eBay customers. This eBay is horrible. Yeah. Instead, I'm like, dude, I'll take sixty five. You know, make a deal. And then he came back, repeat customer. Well, now when he's getting out of, he still he tells me now, Derek, I'm still going to buy from you. I still have my personal collection. I'm just not. They took the fun out of it for me. I'm just not selling no more. Sold. I don't know why. Yeah. So, but anyways, so the stuff that he's looking to get out of, I got for like cheaper than I could get it graded for. So I already know the grades and the cards and what price he was asking. So anyways, it, it works no matter what you're doing. I know we always talk cards. No matter what you're doing, if you build relationships with other people in those fields, for whatever reason, if someday they want to get out of the game, um, you're probably going to get a phone call or a message. And if they're really serious, you're going to be able to pick up a lot of inventory for very cheap. And that's not a bad thing. It's basically somebody getting rid of their death pile to, uh, you know, move on in life. Well, it's already listed, too. It's not like the back stock. I mean, it was just, yeah, he, he, whatever, if you're done, you're done. And there's plenty of other things. If I was, you know, uh, if it was you, I'd probably try to talk you into it more, say, go sell here, go do this, go do that, try this. But I'm like, okay, I'm going to take advantage of a situation that comes our way. Uh, but you're still on the PayPal wagon, so how long until you have to go over to manage payments, or have I, you got that invite have, or anything yet? I have no idea. All I know is I pull up here and it says I've got more money in this PayPal than I ever have before. Well, that's that's not a bad thing. So it's just kind of hanging out, and I'm you know just trying to decide what to do with it. That's always a great problem. Most people have to figure out how to make the money they have last, and pay what bills to pay or what to yeah. do. When you have the problem of what should I do with all this extra money that I just have here? And I know what I'm going to do. I, I've got a couple things kind of a brewing here at the, uh, you know, 
uh, at the office. This is the weirdest tax season ever. I'm telling you, it's already turned into strangeness. Said so those two questions of, of your stimuli payments, that's going to throw some people off. Um, and for those of you who still you know, do your own taxes, it's going to be a little different as you go through the, the software, so be aware of that. There's several other things. Um, you know, there's a, a new $300 uh, above the line deduction for anybody. You don't have to. Um, oh, now explain that. So normally you have to you have your standard deduction or your itemized deduction. That's when you have your home, like interest, charitable donations, you know, medical expenses. There's several things that go into it, but those are the major ones. Real estate taxes. And if that's higher than about $25,000, depending on how old you are and um, that's as a married. But anyways, that's that's what that number is. And you either got it or you didn't. But now there's a special $300 deduction for anybody because of COVID. And that's in, if you if you donated any money, uh, $300, which let's, I mean, most people do. A lot of people do, you know, through some form, you're able to take a new deduction. So okay. that's something new that is all brand new on tax returns. Between that all, those, all that sanitizer that you bought to sell, they wouldn't let you sell, that you gave somebody <laughs> or whatever. Yes, yeah. yes, all the extra um, alcohol, you know, whatever you purchase, and they wouldn't let you sell. So there's there are some new things that are on the tax returns. So. I donated to Adam up accounting. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. LLC, SAP, something. I, I donated to the, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, Johnny Lingo store. <laughs> I, I had to get some things. But going back to the uh, the death pile, I, I, one of the things I want to do is again, I, I've gone down the road. Um, thank you, first favorite, Brian. He, he talked about buying stuff in the thrift stores, and he said he didn't really like it. You know, it's kind of the thrill of the hunt, but then listing always kind of, that's why everybody gets death piles. And that's how we started. Bought a lot of things. I've got an entire uh, office over here in bins, very well organized now, full of VCRs, you know, older, like, um, what do you call it, turntable things, which I need to get listed. But... I have a lot of clothing that I think we're just going to death pile it. I'm just going to put it in and say, here you go. Here's 50 shirts for 100 bucks. Two I saw shirt, just get rid of So it. I was on the Instagram today, and there's a guy that I'm trying to get on the show, so I, we'll see. I, I always make these big promises and say this guy or that guy, name drop. Now I'm just saying uh, I'm in contact with a lot of people, but schedules and things you know, don't always match up. And you're welcome for Adam T. last week. Adam T. He, brought, he, brought he was awesome. awesome. He was awesome. Yeah. Numbers were good. Um I think I pieced it together pretty well. I think so. It was it was kind of choppy. Like I said, the uh, uh, what do you want to call it? Um, the hires at B did not want this information to get out, but the, we made the, sure that it did. The Skype people in his mom's basement were really uh, really <laughs> wrecking that line. They, they were. So you're you're looking to get some other guests. But yeah, well, I'm looking. Uh, and so I'm following some people, and I see this guy doing exactly what you're saying as far as like. Here's these shirts, shows them on, I mean, obviously he has a pretty good following of people that are going to see this, and he says, you know, 400 for all these shirts. Yeah. It's kind of like we were talking about the breakers with uh, basketball cards or yeah. whatever. Yeah. And he just goes through and like, okay, this, you know, I think he had vintage older shirts, and he just explained why they were cool, and like, first one that wants it, $400, I'll ship them to you. Yeah. Same kind of idea. And that's the same kind of, like, don't get me wrong, like, I have these shirts, but to me it's not like as, I don't know, I don't get excited about it. But every one of those shirts, like I said, when I bought it, like I did the research, I went out there, um, you know, I know every one of them would sell probably for 20 to 25 bucks. So if you can buy it for $2 shipping, I mean, if you can make $15 times, you know, 100, like, that's a pretty good chunk of change. But for me, I just, I don't know, I'm, I'm not real into shirts. I've gotten into you get, you get the cell hound going. I do. You get old cell hound, you just take your, your few pictures and uh, send it over their way and they'll, they'll have it, you know. Up for you. I, I, I get it. That's man. That's the hard part. Is I get these cards and I get them sold and I and I make two hundred dollars in a second. Man, that gets me. Excited. It occupies your time and it gets your mind racing. It, it does, you know. And, I, and it's sad to say, but like that, you know, when you sell for for twenty and then two hundred, you get a little more excited. Yeah, a little more cheese on that whopper. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes, yes, that's, that's a good saying. Um. Yeah, no, I had the same. I'm busy week in cards are just, I mean, it, it's oh, where it's at right now. It's hot. Hopefully it stays that way. Uh, obviously, that's what we're big into, what we talk about. I think long term, there's some good things coming. Um, I'm always nervous that the bubble's going to burst. I am that way with about anything, though. If that was uh, vintage Nike shirts or, you know, autographs from uh, Neil McCoy, I don't know. 
whoever whoever he got out there. But whenever something's hot, I'm always the one that's like, okay, any minute now, let's go away. Um, I think there's some good and some bad cards. We're actually into a, a series uh, going into more depth, more long long form about about some cards and, and how we go about our business. But um, no, my wrestling cards uh, have been going just crazy, and then I have some other sports cards. Um, obviously, like we we're saying with the Super Bowl coming up, if you have anything that's uh, Tom Brady right now or Patrick Mahomes sold, or did mine? Mine sold last week. I mean, they're they're gonna go. Yeah. Uh, with yours last week. Now, here's what I was gonna say to you. Now, this is off uh, what you call Monday morning quarterbacking. Everybody Monday morning quarterbacks. Adam took the money. He did the right thing. He set a price and he got his money. And he sold the card raw. Yes. He had a Tom Brady rookie card. Yes. Now, had you held out and went for an auction style, say two scenarios, either after this weekend, uh, going up to the Super Bowl for seven days, or if he wins this next Super Bowl, I mean, that's not seven? Uh, yeah, seven or eight? Seven. And, I mean, he's all, already probably, I mean, I don't like him, but you got to respect him. Now I'm kind of cheering for him because he's an old guy on, on the uh, Tampa Bay team. That's right. But, I mean, I'm not a big Tom Brady fan. I didn't come into it, but you got to say he's the greatest to ever play that position right now. Now, hold on. Now, hold on. We have, unfortunately, we have a skewed view because we're in Utah, and, and we all have the, we got jobbed by Michael Jordan because we should have won two NBA championships. At least one. At least one. But, I mean, come on. Yeah, we should have yeah. won two. Let's be honest here. <laughs> I mean, we pushed off. Like, he pushed off and took away our whole championship. Uh, uh, yeah. So, going back to that, it is... I think because of that, we missed out on the beauty, and we were too young. I mean, we you missed out on the beauty of the greatest ever. Oh, I think up until we started playing it, up until the Jazz were good at a certain point, the Bulls were awesome. Growing up, I'm sure you loved Michael Jordan. Oh, Everyone did. But then there came a point where the Jazz were actually competitive, and you're like, oh, I hate this guy. So and then he rips out your heart. It's like that, I've said it before, but it's that hot girl that you were after that you never knew you had a chance with. And uh, you're going out on dates, or almost going out on dates, and then she just ripped out your heart and then laughed in your face, and there you were holding the pieces. Yeah, she left you hanging. That was Michael Jordan. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. I think we have a skewed view. I think there's a few others that can, I mean, uh, Patrick Ewing and the New York Knickerbockers, I guess they've won a few championships. Um, they have? A long time ago. Yeah, a, but before the, we were born. But the Knicks won a championship. Yes. The, the Utah Jazz. Had not. Sure. But uh, Charles Barkley. Yeah. Uh, we go down the list of people that... Sure. We weren't the only ones that had a skewed view of how Michael Jordan treated us. But the bulk majority saw him as what he was and as the greatest. Mm -hmm. so I think you kind of take that away, but, I mean, Tom Brady's the greatest ever. Like, sure. I mean, he just is, and if you can't admit that, and if yeah, you, you can't you, appreciate You can't it, argue it. Yeah, I mean... There's not an argument about, like, well, I don't like him. Okay, you don't like him. He still wins. They were showing, you know, the amount of playoff games played, you know, and they showed it. And I think Joe Montana had 16, and Tom Brady had 32, like double the highest, closest one to yeah. him. I mean, he's by far the greatest. And and why you don't root for him? I, I don't know. I mean, I well, because they always won, and you didn't want to see him just keep winning dynasties. Or it's fun to like somebody coming up, but everyone likes to see him go down. Like. The, the higher you get, the everyone wants to see you fall. That's just how that's human nature, they right? They call it the crab syndrome. You know? Yeah, yeah, out of the bucket. Everybody goes up the bucket, and as soon as you get high, somebody tries pulling you down. It was all right for Tom to get one or two Super Bowls, but after that, it was like, hey, we've, we've seen this before. We've had enough. I'm rooting for Tommy. It's to time for uh, number one. But then the Randall Cunningham to have his time. But then the hard part is, I mean, you know, Aaron, I mean, little brother Aaron, like I said, you know, he, he knows your buddy Andy. That's the problem. Well, not the problem. We got, yeah. We got family relations. We got some relations. We Ships, got, I guess. We got uh, University of Utah. Uh, you know, Kyle Woodingham's son is also on the staff. Um, you know, we got Dirty Dan from BYU who's on the like. There's some ties there. Uh, Darwin Williams, you know, from Utah State. So it's it's a tough kind of pull. Yeah, it's a tough pull. The other thing is you cannot block. Like I said that out on the text. You can't not like Andy Reid. I don't care who you are. Just the guy who puts a smile on your face. He has fun with it. He looks like the Kool-Aid man. He gets all excited. He just says, I'm going to go out and eat some cheeseburgers. Who doesn't want to go out and eat a cheeseburger with Andy Reid? The, the best is, you know, the line he said, everybody's kind of giving him a hard time. What are you doing on fourth and one? And he says, I went to BYU. Fourth and one is always a passing down. Yeah, every time's a passing down at the old BYU. Yeah, so, I don't know. That's kind of my, you know, coming up, the, the Super Bowl. I mean, but 
there you heard me and Adam just go off on it. So if you have any of these things in your death pile, it might not just be cards. You might have a Chiefs hat. You might have some jerseys. You might have Tom Brady uh, paraphernalia, whether it's uh, Patriots or otherwise. Get that stuff listed. I did well. I had a uh, 49er jacket that I sold, whatever it was, last year. I think they were in the Super Bowl. I had that listed. I have got a $4, I think it was maybe, maybe 2 a uh, jacket from the Super Bowl, I think in 2004? Yeah, no, it was 2005. The Patriots beat the Eagles, I believe, and I got it at the DI. That was also uh, Andy Reid. And it still has the tags on it that I am going to get listed, and so it's like a nice suede jacket. Get up so there. I'm hoping and in the your title, I put, I put Patriots Tom Brady in the title. Oh, ooh, that's a great, that's a great. Because when people are searching, they might not be looking necessarily for Patriots. They might be looking for Tom Brady, and that, that pops on the thing, and people are going to find it. Tommy, so I have my Tampa Bay shirt that I wear every single Sunday now. It's 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 my it's been my religion. And, uh, oh, I, you know, Tampa Bay, I got it. I, I like those things. See, see. Another thing I want to say before we get to the break real fast, as far as uh, if you have an eBay store and you have promoted listings eligible, um, a lot of people have been kind of upset about this stuff. Do it. Do it. And what I've been doing is I just do 1%. So a lot of people are like, oh, I want to give them 5 extra percent or 10 extra percent or whatever. I put in 1%. And the amount of sales that I've generated, especially with cards, off of giving 1%, Huge. It's, it's it's big. It's it's a lot of sales. And if if you want to look, I mean, just afterwards, just go and search what you're selling, or just go search right now, and you'll see the promoted ads in there. It pops up, and uh, people are going to find it, and they're going to buy it. And I mean, what's one percent of a hundred dollars, Adam? One dollar. If you don't have one dollar that you can build into your margins, yes. Um, or you're too low. Or I mean, okay, ten dollars. It's ten cents. Like. Yeah, eBay's taking a little a little bigger cut, but you gotta play the game. Yeah. They're the dance partner, like Adam said earlier. You get get those items sold. Like he says, yes, you know they're great, but the money in the bank is better than having items listed. So, and well, while we're at it, we have uh, what baseball pitchers and, and catchers are starting to report spring training. Spring training that's coming up. Um, Valentine's Day. Oh. Make sure to buy something for that special person in your life. When we talked about this. I think last you you know. There's lots of things on an eBay store. Go go find something unique. Find something, uh, you know, personalized. Maybe uh, look for something. <laughs> Just don't go down to Domino's or Pizza Hut and get the uh, pepperoni pizza in the heart shape. No. That's not going to do it. Yeah, I think it's Papa, Papa Murphy's. You go home and bake. Like, who wants to go home and bake a pizza? Here you go. I got you a pizza. Don't uh, get you the sweetheart uh, necklace, oh, yeah. the candy necklace. Maybe that's original. I don't know. Maybe. Think outside the box. Get over on eBay and, uh, and get it. And it will arrive, and then it will show that you actually thought and took the time to do it. But also, uh, think about stuff that you have that's unique that you can be selling. Because, right. I mean, who knows what that is? To somebody, it might be a Tom Brady card. To somebody else, it might be a, a, a diamond uh, necklace that you just happen to have 10 of in the house. I don't know. That's right. Lots of things. And that stimuli money is out there. There's allegedly going to be some more uh, tax refunds. We usually talk, you got to get those people to spend money. They like said there's still uh, the economy is kind of. In a weird place, but people have money. Their discretional income is high, and they buy stuff. Well, that, yeah, that's exactly it, and I, I, that's where I'm always weird because I kind of like to save. I'm kind of like rainy day, hoard up some stuff guy for the most part. But then in the same, I'm glad that everyone's not like me because then I go over on eBay and I get my stuff listed. And we all know the secret is the more you list, the more you happen to sell. It's just how it works. Adam's living proof right now. I've been doing it. Um, people we've been talking to have been doing it. And, and those numbers are up, so you might as well take some of that government money that people are getting for free. Yeah, it's it's, it's the same with my buddy closing out a store. I could try to talk him into staying selling, or I could just make a good deal. You can tell everyone, save your money. You never know what's going to happen. It's a weird place. You might need to pay rent next month, or you can just say, okay, I'll take that. Thank you. So, do you really, like I said, we've been on this venture. We'll, we'll get to it here once we get past it. We, I think we are probably officially at the two-year mark. Are we there? We are pretty dang close. We have, like, I feel bad because last year we were going to have our big celebration. I was thinking COVID. COVID kind of ruined it. We had the golden tickets going out. Um, Slipping COVID. I, I, have, I have some things I was going to do for this anniversary. I don't know. Maybe we'll push it out. Uh, I got some more giveaways. Um, I, always, I always like our people interacting with us. I always like hooking them up with things if I can. Um, if you're a fan of us, we're over on 
you know, Facebook, uh, me and Adam are on the, Adam's on the LinkedIn, I'm on the LinkedIn, Instagram, uh, Twitter. Twitter, all kinds of places. But where we're going, is, it's been great. So many listeners have been starting to interact with us. Uh, the King gave us some good suggestions that we're going to hammer down here in the second half of the episode. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to start a new series in the second half for a few weeks, and hopefully it will help uh, people boost those numbers and get more sales. It's, that's what it's all about. It's about making some more money, having some fun, and paying less in taxes. Hey, guys. It's uh, D. Roy Everett and... Adam Beasley from the Death Files and Taxes podcast that you're listening to right now. Your favorite account, I know. It's the greatest thing in the whole world. A lot of you have been asking what you can do to help the podcast out, and seriously, all we want is a review. Yeah. Hopefully it's a five-star review, but if not, be fair, uh, at least a four. <laughs> we know you're listening, like I said, we see the numbers. We're all over the world, like I said, it's just we see it, we appreciate everyone listening. Help us get a little higher up there. Help us uh, get more new Helps listeners. With the algorithms, people can help find us out, and it really does help. So if you can go to Apple iTunes, that's where a lot of you are already listening, or, or wherever you're listening. Spotify, Apple, you know, all of these different things. They're all out. Wherever you listen, give us a, you don't even have to write a review. Just give us five stars. If you want to give us a review, that's cool, too. We appreciate it, and keep listening. Thanks for listening, guys. Welcome back to this special new, I guess, uh, series of Cards for Dummies, I think that's what we're going to call it. Yeah, we'll call it. We had a uh, had a person reach out to us and, and ask a few questions, and we thought, you know, let's make a series out of that. We could, we could try to do a long-form uh, podcast, or we could, you know, take a couple weeks and go in-depth, and I think we're going to do that. Give you some good information. The King reached out to us, uh, like, so we're going to try and really get some, some deep dives, some nuts and bolts reached out and said that he acquired a, a large amount of, of cards and didn't know where to start. And I think this goes back to also last week's episode. Um, Adam T. talked about it. He got Grandpa's thing, and it's like, all right, I got this now. Where do I go next? Exactly. So, you, so you've decided. Uh, a lot of the times we talk about figure out your niche, figure out what you're going to do. This, this applies to not just cards, but just in general reselling. You figured out what you want to do. Now what? Yeah, now that you have, all right, I have either this idea or I have these items, how do I make money? And that's what we're going to kind of go down here over the next couple of weeks. Today we're really going to kind of hit it hard on, on the research. You know, kind of, you got to know what you have. Because if you know what you have, you know you can kind of what you can sell it for. You know what you're, you're looking to sell it for. And you got to know, okay, what do you want to sell it for? Are you like, we talked about earlier with Adam, you're looking for those, uh, you're looking to make a couple hundred dollars? Are you comfortable doing a quick flip for 20 bucks? Or, or what are you invested in it? And, and sometimes um, I'm, I'm both. There's a lot of times I'm like, okay, I'm into this, you know, a couple bucks. If I can make 20 and keep going, keep going. Uh, everyone kind of laughs, makes fun of Little Caesars. But do you remember uh, Little Caesars back in the day was just a regular pizza place, right? And it was in Kmart. And, and you know, you go around and it was a pizza place, whatever. Then they came out with the five buck uh, quick and ready pizza, uh, and that blew those guys. And, uh, and it blew them up, and it was a five dollar pizza. It wasn't particularly a good pizza, but you knew what you were getting. It was hot. You walked in there, it was ready. You'd grab it, and you'd go right. And they knew their market, and they decided this is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to be. Uh, a lot of times when we're selling, uh, yeah, some people are like, "Well, I only sell things if I can make you know a hundred x on it or whatever." Yeah, there's there's something to be said with being the uh, the little Caesars of whatever you're doing to where. I might just volume. I'm going to move a lot of stuff, and I'm going to try and make 20 bucks, 30 bucks. Yep. You know, it adds up. Yep, and that goes back to the very beginning. We talked, what's your why? Like, why do you want to do this? Why do you think that you want to start selling? And usually it's to make money, and how much money are you trying to make? And so uh, we're going to talk more about cards, but you can relate it to whatever you're selling. Um, in answer to the question, the research, and this is where it kind of, it is, it's a tricky question because... It depends if you find Grandpa's 1960s uh, Tops cards, or do you find Grandpa's uh, 1986 uh, Tops cards? Yeah. You know, there, there's a big range of what that could be worth, and and how you're gonna go about doing research. Because on one, if you find just um, a complete set from the 1990s, you're gonna look for a few key players and maybe a few insert cards. Versus if you find something from the early 40s or 50s, you're gonna go in depth for each player yeah. and look a lot more heavy. So uh, it's knowing what you have. 
And that's kind of like it says, you know, particularly answering the king's question. You know, we got a large um, 80s and 90s type lot. Um, so that's what your first thing you would look at is, is you want to look at the companies of the cards. Because, like I said, as, as I've done my research as some of the cards that I've purchased, early 80s, late 70s, you know, there's always kind of these one-offs, which is really weird. Like, I've got some icy, like the the, the, can, or the, uh, the drink. I've got some of those cards, jack-in-the-box cards. Um, what is it, Grandma? Grandma Cookies. Bread. Yeah, bread. Grandma's yeah. Cookies. You know, some of these off-brands, it just makes these cards more valuable. Because they're a little more rare. Um, if it's a complete set, what you're going to want to do, first off, is identify name players that you have. So if you're thinking early 80s, you know, it might be a, a Doc Gooden, a, a Don Magley, Don Magley Daryl Strawberry, um, it gets a little Nolan Ryan. Uh, if, if it gets a little later in those years, you got uh, King Griffey Jr. Um, if it's basketball, it's the same. You got your Michael Jordan, your Patrick Ewing, uh, you, kind of the star players you're that looking for the star. people that if you said to your mom, "Hey, you know Patrick Ewing's in town," she knows who that is. Yeah. Sean Kemp's in town. Am's mom knows who that is for some reason. She's a big Sean Kemp fan. <laughs> Sorry, to Adam's mom. Um, you know, but you want those name brand players to where it, you know, if I if I say if I say, hey, mom, new bulls in town, it's not going to do any, no. not, not going to raise any any. No, uh, no one knows who that is unless you're involved in it, right? Yeah. So uh, you're going to want to go through some of those more name brand players, and and you probably want to segregate those out, and then look and do some research on those and see what you have. And and you don't even have to be a big sports person or or a movie connoisseur or anything. I always go to. I just go to Wikipedia and look up the championships, like who won the championship in 75 through 85 or whatever, whatever those years, and then you just find the star players. You can also, again, look for Hall of Fames, who was inducted to the Hall of Fames. Like, those are the things that are worth money that people know about in general. There are these one-offs, but and also rookie first year, second year, those are tend to be the ones that are worth more money. They tend to be. Um, there's always... For everything we're saying, there's somebody that's collecting cards that says yes, but this, yes, but that. There's always exceptions to every rule we say. We're just trying to make it easy and a blanket statement for people trying to get into it, trying to begin. Uh, insert cards, right? There's What is an insert card? There, there's certain cards. So um, there's what they call a base card, which is basically your most generic card. Uh, you open a pack, it's probably going to be... Your most common card. It, it's, it's very uh, plain. Uh, an insert card would be something special that would identify it as either it's a little thicker, maybe there's a game used jersey in there, it has a number, you know, like this is number 10 of 100 produced. It didn't really happen a lot back in the 90s or, or 80s, maybe the later 90s it started to. But even with that, sometimes there was like a hologram card uh, with my wrestling cards uh, that were, I think they were 94, uh, some WCW cards. There was a hologram sting card that was put in every so often. Yeah. That's really hard to get that I went on eBay and actually bought. Um, but what makes it stand out is it's only put in so many packs and it was this hologram card. And it was cool because it was different. Yep. Um, so the same thing with what you have in your in your collection. See if there's anything that stands out like Adam says. It, it's different. It's uh, not probably mass produced. It came in the Flintstone uh, vitamins box or, yeah. or whatever. The post cereal box. Um, other than that, uh, it's it's the same thing as it's it's condition, right? If, is it a complete set? Do you want to break up that set? Do you just want to sell a few pieces? Um, do you want to sell it as a combined set? Make sure everything's there. Well, and that's the thing is, you know, really the thing you also want to do is is look at what you have. I I kind of learned this as I went through as I got back into the hobby. I had a large box about five thousand cards that were from when I was a kid. And you never knew what was in there. Like I said, you, you remembered but didn't remember. And some of the things that might have been cool to you when you were younger are, are different now or they're not worth money. So usually what I like to do to start is I kind of pull all the cards out and I try and find, like, what do I have? So do I have 1981 Top Series? If that's the case, what I do is I go onto eBay and I look up 1981 Top Series and I pull up the things that are listed and I, I always do it by price, what's the highest, and then I go to the solds and see what's sold. And that gives you an idea of what... Uh, that's, a, that's a good thing because you might not even know what you have. Maybe you got grandpa's cards, you don't really know baseball. But you put in 1950 top series, 
and you look and you can say, okay, here's what I'm looking for, even though I don't know what I'm looking for. I'm looking for that Mickey Mantle that just sold for $5.2 million. And, and like Adam said, you're going to want to sort it out. Um, what I'd recommend is buying beforehand. Uh, they're called penny sleeves. You can get them at any, any card shop or on eBay. It's a, it's a thin uh, plastic sheet that you put the card in to protect the card. And then you put it in the hard sleeve. And then you put it in the hard sleeve, and that, that might come on down the road a little bit. But, you double back it. Uh, the reason is um, condition means a lot. And if you go from a card that's in great condition to something just kind of scratched up, it can make a tremendous amount of difference, which is really weird. Um, also, you're going to look at your corners. Obviously, you want sharp corners. It's, you know, the... I don't want to say the sharper the better because then you're, you're out there cutting them yourself. But you want them to look like well-pointed corners. You're looking for, is it centered? Yeah. Um, also, is there, like, kids used to write autographs, practice their autographs on there. Is there dents? Is there deems? Is there anything on the surface of the card that has uh, indents? Um, yeah, condition. Just strong. condition overall. And, you know, if it's an older, here's the hard part. If it's a 1990s card and that happens, it's probably junk Yeah. 99% of the time. If it's 1950s card and it's got that, there's still value. Oh, absolutely. And, and that's where it's hard to just general blanket in everything. So, um, but you want to see your condition, you get everything sleep so that you can preserve whatever condition it's in, hopefully longer. Yeah. And, and like I said, again, this is the same idea, I guess, is with, uh, you know, Jewelry, if you inherit grandma's large amount of jewelry, just kind of, like I said, look at it, kind of find out what it is. Old documents, it's crazy. Like said, you can sell some old documents. If you find grandma and grandpa's, you know, um, you know, their deed to their home from the 1930s or different, you know, things from whatever small city that they lived in. There's, again, kind of this vibe where people want old stuff. So this is, like I said, we're getting heavy in a card, but it really applies to anything. If it's yeah, a large it, lot of... It's doing your research, right? Yeah. So it's like, yeah, is this is this a common item? Is this not a common item? What makes this valuable? What makes it not valuable? The same thing. It, it is, I mean, with everything. Yeah, and that's, the, I mean, eBay has made it so easy. And like I said, if you think about it, if you go back 20 years, you know, to kind of the beginning of the Internet, yeah, it listed a lift, but it wasn't like common. You had it in your pocket. It, it was a lot harder then. Like I said, you didn't quite, you had to kind of know what you were looking for. Now you can have it, and it'll take you 20 seconds, and you know, I have at least an idea of what you have. What well, you have, and, and another tool that, that we just don't use enough, and it is a few extra steps, and I'm telling you, I, I've been using it this week, is Terapeak. If you have an eBay store subscription, um, I don't remember at what level we covered it back when we did the store subscriptions, but there is Terapeak is a research tool that eBay bought out. It used to be its own company, and it will help you find this. Uh, you go and do a search in there. So it's like eBay where you're looking for solds and things, but it gives you more data, and you can drill down on it. So if you're looking at that 1950 top set, um, you can look at what's listed and what's sold in the last 90 days on eBay, or you can look at a year's worth of data. I think it's a year. It might have a little more uh, on Terapeak. And you can really say, okay, it shows you what month is the best for selling. The best month for selling wrestling cards this year was November. Yeah. And it shows me the date, and it shows me why that was the date. So if you really want to drill down to it, you say, okay, I got Grandpa's cards. Um, I think these ones are the ones worth volume, worth money. I don't want to go through what we're going to cover in the rest of the set. I just want to flip them. Uh, okay, this is the best day. This is the best time. Um, it looks like auctions are my best option because of what this says. Or buy it now price. These are going in this range. Uh, this is what I'm going to list it for. It, it really helps you uh, do all that research. So this, is, again, is like it says, Derek has really worked his niche. He knows his wrestling stuff. You find, once you do it, you know, you can kind of find and look into it. Same with me. Like I said, I didn't know this stuff. Take some time. I mean, it's funny. Like I said, all of this kind of, again, stems from, you know, we started the podcast. Gary V talked about just do it. We've done it. It's been two years. But what do you do? Like, honestly, if you think about it, what do you do from, you know, 8 p.m. until 11 o'clock? I mean, what are you doing? I mean, most people are, are watching some TV, which is fine. You relax a little bit. Um, you're kind of dreading going to work the next day. Uh, you're probably getting a lunch together maybe at some point. And uh, not a whole lot else, you know? You have the power of everything in, in your pocket. Yeah, you're cruising, you're cruising Facebook to see uh, what your friends are up to, who's yeah. doing what. Get on there and start searching for items on eBay, look on Macari, look on the Facebook Marketplace. There is money everywhere to be made. And, and uh, 
Yeah, I mean, there's just, uh, and you get to the point, I mean, I still look up things, but it gets to the point where you can walk through a, a store or a thrift store or a card shop or whatever, and you know that something's worth value, and you just know it. Like, you don't have to yeah. look it up and look at the solds. Now, you might want to be more specific, but the other day I was, I was over at Phil's, and I saw a card in his case, and uh, Phil's criminally... Uh, underpriced, like, and we've told him. And I always, like, every time I leave, like, you know, whether it's fifty, hundred dollars I always give him, like, ten dollars. I said, Phil, here's your tip. <laughs> here's a tip. Yeah. Uh, but I see a card in the case, and I'm like, okay, that's a rookie. Okay, I just sold the rookie card of that guy. And then I saw it was yellow, and uh, it had the laser. It was a laser special insert of this, of this guy. And I thought, well, that's worth some money. And then um, I looked at the card, and I'm like, hey, Phil, let me get this out. And I kind of looked at it. He wanted ten dollars for it. Sold. And I know I'm going to sell. I'm, now I'm going to go through the grading process and everything, and we'll break that down again later. We've done it in the past. But I know I'm going to get at least at least $100 off that card, and I'm going to be into it maybe 30 Yeah. And that was just a quick look at the store. I mean, if I'm on eBay cruising, I, I, I buy a bunch of lots. Uh, it's kind of like our buddy Adam last week was saying. You kind of know what to look for. Yep. And once you get that down, which only comes with experience in doing it, right? And it can be from buying, it can be from being a fan, it can be from a few other places, but you got to have the hours in of, okay, this is what I'm doing, this is what I'm looking for, this is a name I'm after. Even with our buddy Waddy in the baseball, like, he's doing the research, and then he sent me, hey, look for this player. Yep. And so I started buying up that guy, and if you remember, he won uh, Rookie of the Year or whatever, now his cards, I mean, they're, they're skyrocketing. I've been watching it, and of course, I'm getting, getting them in and stuff, but... While he was doing the research, you're already a fan of something. You're already researching something. You have hobbies, uh, whether that's mountain biking, watching movies, or watching sports, uh, skipping rope. Whatever that is, you know the best rope that skips. The husky section <laughs> does not skip rope. We haven't skipped a rope for a while, <clears throat> but maybe we should. But you get to where you know, okay, this is the brand, and this is what it sells for. And if you come across it at a, a thrift store or an online or whatever, you're like, oh, that's way underpriced. Yeah. You buy it and flip it, right? And I know, and like I said, it could be anything. I know, you know, last week we talked about it. I mean, it was a certain purse. It was a certain item. I mean, there's always, like, people post, there's certain clothing, like, you know, that, that is always, it's the same thing with, like, vintage concert T-shirts. Like, there's so many things that there are. I mean, literally, there's thousands of people jumping into the game every single week. I need to give a shout-out to Adam again. Um, so he was talking about the thrift, uh, the Goodwill online. Goodwill. Goodwill. I'm like, man, I haven't been over there for a while. So what do I do the next day? I'm over there. I'm looking at my stuff. I find an item. I buy it. Now the 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 uh, shipping was about as much as the item. They didn't work on that. But I was still able to buy an item way undervalued. It was something I got for about twenty bucks, and then they're going to ship it for about eighteen. But I think I can get about two hundred dollars for this item. Forty bucks. You know, fifteen in fees and everything. So you're gonna make what? And, and it's bucks. just another. It's just another spot because uh, uh, the other day I was over at the Target. I had this secret magic Target where I could go, and the shelves were always stocked with cards. And I'd, I'd call Adam or Painter and be like, "I can't buy them all. I need to get back to work." But the, there's plenty. There's so many cards up here. You guys need to come buy them. Uh, the other day I went, and there's a line of guys. <laughs> Your secret got out. Secret got out. And so I'm like, "Oh crap." Um, that place is gone. I've went back a few times. It's, it's gone. Have, have you, has the transaction completed on the honey hole find? Have you, have you completed the transaction? Can we talk about it yet or not? Yet? Not, not yet. We're still, we're still in some process of a few things there. But um, what I'm saying is you find more places to hunt, yep. uh, more places to, to gather things. And I think that's something with the research is you find, okay, where can I find this item? Is this just a one-off thing that I'm going to sell once and have to go back to the yard sale and just be kind of always looking for it? Or is this something that I can sell and keep reselling over time? Yeah. And some people like the hunt, and they like to just do one-offs, and that's fine. I've done plenty of that. Or is it your bread and butter, this is what you have, this is what you have. And like I said, there's always bolos. You can look up things to sell. But again, kind of going back to that research is you have to take some time, see what you have or what you want, and really go in and do the deep dive. Like I said, pull up the eBay app. We talk about eBay a lot, but also, you know, Macari, Thread up, you know, all of these other things. Everyone else is kind of. Get, I mean, you look on Amazon. Like some yeah, sure. Amazon I mean, looking. a Google, a Google search, and look at the Google Shopping. Speaking of, I, we might be getting something. The UPS truck just pulled up. No, Amazon's got a big delivery coming in, but you can get a general uh, 
idea of what things are costing. And um, that's the one thing, though, is you do got to sit down and go through your stuff and look at what you have. You can't, but you can't, you can't skip that first spot of doing your research to see what you have because uh, then you're just in a crapshoot. Yeah, it's 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 an educated guess. That's what you're doing. Is you're taking. And even if you have the items and you don't pay anything for the items, I mean, you're not out anything. And and so I guess that's, that's general 101. I just had a message come through from the legend, was just listening to episode 116, I think it was. That would just happen. And uh, he says he wants to go thrift shopping with us. Oh, episode 112. Oh, boy. I want to go thrift shopping with you guys from, from the legend. So the legend. There you go. Maybe... Uh, we're trying to, once it opens up again, hopefully this year we can we can start doing that kind of stuff. And this is, like I said, this is the whole thing, is of the research, like, Derek has a different eye than I do. And that's why, like, we really haven't ever had a chance to go kind of together, as we did up in San Jose. A little bit. There's a few things that we are very limited on space. Space and time. Yeah. You know, what we found, and I passed up on it, and now I'm kicking myself the Oakland Raider jacket. I got it. You got it. I mean... There's th certain things, and there was a couple games, I think there was one in like Russian or something that, you know, that you can find something, and, and honestly, that's the fun part is, as you make money, and you treat it like a business, because it is, you can travel and go buy some stuff, and it's all legitimately right offable to pay less in tax. And part of that's you got to figure out, um, do you want to be a, a competitor with a lot of people, or do you want to find your own little shallow end of the, the pond, it might be a deep end of the pond where you're by yourself. Uh, with cards right now, obviously there's a ton of competition. There's a ton of people selling it. There's a ton of people doing it. Whereas when I was selling Boy Scout T-shirts or uh, uniforms at the time, wasn't a whole lot of people doing it. I could go find. I'd go to grand openings of, of thrift stores. I'd leave the state, and I'd, uh, I'd have my wife with me, and we just fill up uh, the carts full of Boy Scout uniforms. I'd spend you know five six hundred dollars, and I'd come home and I'd, I'd sell them for you know. Triple what I paid for them, a lot of money. and they would go. They would go fast. Now the Boy Scouts have been in a little trouble since then, and there's not as many chapters going, and they're not selling like they were. By the time I was, uh, you were you about the only. I was the only guy doing it yeah. for the most part. Whereas right now, what I'm doing with cards, there's a lot of people doing it in certain genres. There's not a whole lot of wrestling, but if you try to get into basketball or football, there is. But you can also be competitive. You just got to find out what you want to do. Yeah. And like so we're that's what we're trying to do. We're, we did. we got some good questions. We wanted to kind of get into a little series of these are the steps to kind of get going. So right now we're really kind of trying to hit the research part to, to know what you have over the next couple of weeks. We'll kind of go in there talking about how to list, pricing for listing, um, the grading process on cards, and it, you know, verification. There's several different steps to it, but as far as the research goes, the biggest thing you're going to have is find what you have, look on eBay, and find what the solds are. That's Just like you would with anything else. Um, also, okay, do you want to sell them one by one? Do you want to sell the big players, or do you want to sell them a lot? Yeah. And that's something you got to decide. Do you want to go through and break it down? Or do you just want to get rid of it, right? The one thing, too, is is the mystery. I think that's what a lot of this card game or, like, the grab bag, <laughs> it, that's kind of what people are doing. I'm selling grab bags out, out back. You know, I, I bought a grab bag of, of cards. Like, I bought 20 binders full of cards that I think I ended up paying, like, $300 for. But I looked at it, I'm like, holy cow, and just the Ken Griffey's that I pulled out, there's some older cards, like, I made my money and some, and again, it was a... You got to time that one right, too. It, it was early. I was early in the game. Um, I wish it would have been basketball, but it was baseball. But the same thing, I mean, I have, in fact, my son's looking through one, and I only, I briefly looked through it when I bought it. It was one of those impulse buys, I saw it, I knew it had some value, I pulled some out, now I'm in the same you know situation. If I took some time, went through it, and find out what you had, then you know I know more now than what I did a year ago. Now that's the same though. You can pull out those those uh, pages of cards, and you can just sell them as is. Absolutely. Hey, here's a page of uh, I don't know who you got there. Oral Hershiser cards or whatever. I've got Earl. I've got Roger Clemens. I've got Barry Bonds. I've got you can just sell them as so that, or you can decide that hey, I want to get these graded, or I want to sell them one by one. You got to do your research, know what you have, and then decide which way you want to go with it. So we're talking about this. I now have two goals. I'm going to do two things by the time we air the next episode. I am going to list a lot of these cards. I'm going to take three of these binders, 
And that's the thing. You don't have to go through and take a picture of every single player. It's the grab bag. and saying, I have three binders full of said players, and somebody's going to be like, holy crap, this guy probably doesn't know what he has, or maybe yeah, he's said, said, pl said players, said years. Like, I got, you know, these are... 1980s, and it's, you know, Atlanta Braves, right. or, or whatever. Yeah, or whatever players, and I'll put the three of them up for $75, or whatever the dollar amount I want it to be, and I think that's, you know, fair, because, you know, they might be. I don't, I don't know. But right now, it's just sitting in my closet, and I don't know if I want to do the research, because I'm to that point. Or, if I really wanted to, and I want to begin doing the game, then there you go. There's your perfect place to start. And if you're a big baseball guy, that that sounds like nothing but a good time. But if you're not, it's like I just don't I don't want to get into it. And that's a that's a personal decision, right? Or maybe you want to learn it. That that's a choice. That I mean, I can't tell you we're just guys sitting in an office on the internet right now. Yeah, and that's the, <laughs> there's a lot of fun to it. I mean, going through and looking at the cards. My son went through and and took a lot of the cards and sorted them by team. And then he took them, and he looked on the stats, and he sorted them by uh, by by uh, earned run average and then by hits. And I don't know, it's just one of those things like tangible items are just different than looking on your phone. And I think that's what's kind of really you know resonated with me. Uh, one more thing that with, with the cards that you might want to look for is they have sometimes what are called errors, air cards. Oh, I've got a good one. And uh, either that's like a misprint, a miscut. Um, there was a famous one of a baseball card that had a, a foul word on it that uh, then they went through, through and tried to white out. The white out's worth more than the original with the foul word. Billy Ripken had his bat, and underneath it said a phrase that we will never use on the air, and uh, that was the card. Adam says it to me all the time off the air, but not on the air. But anyways, there, there's things like that out there. Or uh, I have a really unique that I have in at PSA right now. It's a... 1980-something um, Don Russ, but on the front of the card it has Fernando Valenzuela, and on the back it has a miscut stat that's off-centered of Eric Davis. So it's totally a wrong card. And the funny part is, is you know, in all these groups, like I said, yeah, find a group on Facebook. Whatever you're interested in, people give each other information. Yes. And... and in this group was an Eric Davis. That's all they wanted was an Eric Davis card. And I'm like, I have an amazing one at PSA. As soon as I get it, I will sell it to you. And that's a good way to find information. And, I mean, the air cards might be a bit of a deep dive, but if you find the right ones, oh, yeah. there's a lot of money to be made there as well. I, and same thing. I found this one. Of, I can't even, His name was like Eric Malder or something. I went to eBay because I had this fat stack of this year. I went on there looked at the highest cards that have been sold, and this guy's air card was like, it's a person I've never even heard of. But if you had this guy's air card, it was worth like $200. And it's just the scarcity of it. It's yeah. just got through quality control, and people are looking for that. They have a complete set, but they're missing this card. The specific. So I went through my cards. I got lucky. I found it, but I looked at it, and it wasn't the air card. And it was like as dumb as a decimal point behind like the trademark or, or something like that. But those are things that if you didn't look up the searches, you would have no idea because you'd skip right over it. And that should still come up in your eBay searches uh, when you're looking for solds and completes. Some of these will pop up and it will say error or whatever. If you look at the card or read the description, it will probably tell you what to look for. And like I'm saying, that there's always groups. And um, those people, I mean, there's people on the Internet. Some people are there to help and some people are just there to steer you off course. Take what you're you're reading with a grain of salt. If multiple people are telling you the same thing, it's probably more accurate. Yeah, so like that is that's a great, and I wish I would have known that you know a little sooner. You go on, there is a Facebook group for Ric Flair, uh, you know, hardcore. Uh, that's you know, all they do. That's all they do. Is I mean, yeah, like Ric Flair. Yeah, Facebook. You got Reddit. You got Twitter. You got all these places, There's right? Junk era 1980 cards. Like they will tell you, and all you have to do is say, "Hey, I'm new to this." You post a couple pictures, and you will have people saying, oh, that's amazing. Yeah, and they'll be lowballing you about, oh, I'll take that off your hands. It's not worth a whole lot. I'll give you $20. Which means it's probably worth something. It's going to be, take my time. Let's let's spend some time and make some more money. So that's how uh, that's how we go about researching 101. I don't know if we're missing anything. If we are, we can add it in next week. But but there you go. Like so There's a, a deep dive, uh, you know, what do we got? Researching for dummies, like I said, have smart proof, like you said, this is the easiest way to get in because you will make money 
if you know what you're looking for. And it's fun. That's the thing, it's taking the time, and that's that's where you make the money. Like, you got to take the time and you learn what you're doing. It, it, there's no shortcut in that. So there's the, the deep dive into research. Next week we'll uh, get into a couple more specifics, but hopefully this will get you started. Let's see if we get any more feedback. If you're like, give us some follow-up questions, you know, send us a message on Facebook. We're happy to go out. We like that we're helping people because it means that you're you know, doing something with it. Yeah, you're listening. We're not just being I'm talking to each other in a room. Sometimes that's nice to know. But I think, man, we had a bunch of listeners in Germany this last week. I well, mean, it's I, all about Sean Kemp and your mom card. Good good times, Brick and see Deutsch to us all. Uh, be happy and prosper. And uh, I think it's I think it's all the Adam had a bunch of uh, he was selling insurance over there in, in Germany or something. They were all just listening to hear him. They, or or maybe somehow your your buddy that the Hoff, you know, they got back and they found your original Baywatch, you know, things that you had sold. Man, if you have original Baywatch stuff, get that listed. That's some money. Baywatch, uh, Knight Rider. Um, all of the, all of these. I was gonna buy the Knight Rider car until he found out that it really didn't have a voice in it. I was disappointed, severely disappointed. I wanted that car. Well, I have, with that being said, I think it's about that time. There are two things in life that are certain, Derek, and that is death piles and taxes.